Since the first Midwest Festival six years ago, the number one question has remained, when is Gridlife coming out west? Gridlife has kept their eyes on the westward horizon, and this year, they find themselves at the Continental Divide. The venue, Colorado's Pikes Peak International Raceway, just a few miles from America's mountain itself. The 1.3 mile course is a roval, which means big banking and high speeds for time attack competitors this weekend. But Gridlife festivals promise more than just time attack, and this weekend, Gridlife's Alpine Horizon Fest is going to make good on that guarantee. So this is our inaugural Gridlife Alpine Horizon Festival. And uh, you can see by the, the background, I'm feeling really good about the name. We can run as late as we want. We have no curfew at all. And then everything's contained. And there's so much uh, area to expand. So we've got Sierra cars into dirt. We've got a rally course over there. And then we've got drifting and road racing and time attack and all the other things you expect all in this like contained area. It feels like the Thunderdome. It's so rad. Good buddies Jeremy Swenson and Sean Krebsbeck have come out from Minnesota this weekend to PPIR with the goal of winning the weekend for their classes and accumulating more season points heading into the championship. My name is Jeremy Swenson driving the Viking Corvette in the uh, track mod class. Uh, my name is Sean Krebsbeck. I drive a 2006 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution and I drive in the street mod class here at Gridlife. I was just here three weeks ago so I'm quite familiar. Man, I'm on a lot better tire now thanks to Kumo. So the car was way more hooked up than it's ever been here. Coming into the oval over here, it's a little scary. Being on an incline, it's tougher, I guess. <laughs> uh, one thing that's new to most of us in this series at Pikes Peak is the banks turns. This is a roval. So you start off turn one and two, you're going, my car, I'm doing 135 into turn one, and you're trusting the bank to catch you because without a bank, you'd be in the wall in no time. But after that, you pull off into the infield and you do a short little infield course. Um, it's a little technical on the inside. You gotta make sure you set yourself up right. There's a couple streets you gotta hit good. So getting it right is a lot harder than it looks. Jeremy will get to sit back and relax after just two sessions of time attack as he decimates the street tire record and secures the fastest time for the weekend so far. Sean similarly takes an early lead in Street Mod, both of them having run at PPIR in the past. Set out in the wilds of Colorado, Alpine Horizon Fest offers a much bigger focus on off-road activities than grid life ever has before. And nothing will get your blood pumping like a ride in the Life Motorsports Sierra cars. Hey everybody, Aaron Kaufman all the way from Dallas, Texas from Arc Light Fab. And out here today, this is the Sierra Cars RX3. Uh, so powered by a Hibusa rear drive. They are very different than a 3,000 pound car. They make 200 horse and they weigh about 900 pounds. They do everything you ask immediately. They are a handful to drive, so there is a little bit of a learning curve with it. But once you get it, you just want to turn more laps. So today we're, we're running a, an improvised uh, rally cross, so coming off dirt onto asphalt, asphalt onto dirt. So you have to employ a lot of different skills, a lot of different tricks to get the job done. And the car likes to be driven tail happy, so that's a lot of fun. And this is a car meant to be driven sideways. Today, we're out here letting people have test rides for 150 bucks. You have five laps, fastest lap time wins $500. How's that for a test ride? Continuing the off-road theme, the Rally Sprint Stage made its debut this weekend. Taking place on a two-mile dirt road, this stage is open to anyone who wants to try it, from cars built for rally to Jeeps built for rock rolling. Hello, I'm new tank top wearer and professional race car driver Tom McGorman. We're out here in Colorado at the Gridlife Alpine Horizon Festival. This is uh, the, the Gridlife Rally Sprint Stage, uh, and anybody can come in and pay 20 bucks, I think, and just take some laps. So we've had a lot of cool cars that have come through that otherwise wouldn't really have a place to play in, in Gridlife Sandbox, uh, figuratively and literally. So behind me here, we have a 2019 Honda Passport. It's uh, Honda's brand new SUV. Uh, and they were crazy enough to loan it to us as they built this into a stage rally car. Uh, we're out here throwing it around, slinging dirt and having a good time. 
It's one of the unique aspects of being here at Pikes Peak International Raceway, where we have this rally trail that's almost two miles long. Here this year, you can come out, pay 20 bucks, and just take some fun runs. But you know, me personally, I'd love to see it evolve into some sort of motorsports competition, the way we have drifting and time attack and wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. I bet within a couple years or next year, we'll have rallying as well. And as always, drifters, from pros to amateurs, are out for the festival in full force. Back in Street Mod, Dewey DeWitt has brought his GC Impreza, lovingly dubbed the Boogeyman of Street Mod, to try and challenge Sean and get a win. But the fresh and untested build still has a few bugs to work out. Uh, this car is kind of nutty. It's a lot faster than what I'm used to. Um, it doesn't have ABS and it's terrifying. Um, it's a very analog car. Uh, and it's, it's taken me a little bit of getting used to as a driver. And we're also working on a lot of crazy kinks. Uh, currently we're freaking out behind me trying to replace some uh, some fuel pumps that we're pretty sure just took a crap on us because uh, we have this real cobbled together fuel system in here and it, it's it's breaking a lot but uh, other than that we actually added a little bit of horsepower and we're starting to go a little faster and trying to chase down Sean who is ballistically fast. Dewey will struggle to catch Sean as he faces setback after setback in his Subaru. We've been having some cooling issues. I kind of figured that was coming. The thin air up here doesn't play with heat exchangers well. Hopefully these fuel pumps do the job and I, I can get that one magical lap in. Every time everything's going right, I'm hitting traffic, I'm not playing the time attack game right. It's just, it's my fault. I, I'm fighting two fights right now and that's shaking down a brand new car with a lot of strange parts on it and trying to win an event at the same time. And I am desperate to get a W. This is killing me. I've gone through a pretty serious drought. Grid Life Touring Cup. The wheel-to-wheel -wheel series which debuted this year features a small but aggressive pack of drivers this weekend. Over the course of the event, Tiffany Kelly would prove to be dominant in her S2000 with wins across all conditions. Uh, so what was what was the highlight of the event this year for you? Night shift drift, like hands down. So like the unique feature of here is, again, the curfew, right? We can run as late as we want. We can run as long as we want. We can have music as loud as we want until whenever hour we, we deem appropriate. That was the raddest thing to see for sure.
As Saturday ends, so does this weekend's time attack. Jeremy Swenson will leave a record holder for PPIR, as well as the overall fastest of the weekend, and wins the autocross on Sunday for good measure. Sean follows suit with a commanding victory in Street Mod. Um, so we took first place in Street Mod uh, at Pikes Peak International Raceway. Uh, it was a great weekend. Got three in a row uh, for Grid Life Street Mod, so uh, pretty much made a clean sweep of the, of the series, and we're looking forward to Road America coming up. Last event for us for Grid Life this year is Road America, and I'm already crying thinking that racing is coming to a close and that summer is coming to a close already. It's pert near August, and here we are. <sighs> Racing's the best, and winter isn't, so I'm sad already. The goal this year is to come away with the uh, Street Mod Champion. Uh, we came close last year, we were second place, so I'm, I'm hunting for first place this year. Dewey and his crew will have their hands full finishing the development of their problematic Subaru if they want to be competitive in the fast approaching event at Road Atlanta. It's, it's Sean and I dueling it out. Sean was ballistic fast, but I was, again, still in full shakedown mode. This is the first time I've ever went to an event this year in an attempt to actually try to win it. I've been hearing a lot about Dewey all year, and uh, their, their, their name is Go Faster Suck, and so far he's been doing the lather. Um, he's been fast, but just not fast enough to get into the podiums and stuff. He took third place this weekend, but um, sounds like he's finally getting the car figured out, and uh, they're, they're getting faster and faster, so he's going to be something to deal with at Road America, I'm sure. Of all the parties Grid Life has thrown, Alpine Horizon might just have been the most jam-packed. From wheel to wheel racing to rally. From time attack to Sierra cars. And from night concerts to night drifting. There was something for everyone, and the party's only getting bigger in 2020. I could really see this turning into the biggest event in the country really fast due to the venue and, and how it's set up. You can see the entire track. It's, it's awesome. I think they need to do a uh, toge battle here next year. How great would that be if you can see everything? Pikes Peak puts on an awesome show for all of us. Last night we were watching drifting. The, the drifters were shredding and all of a sudden there's a flamethrower truck in the background throwing like 20, 30 foot flames. Uh, there's no shortage of fun at Pikes Peak. The Grid Life guys are nuts. They work their tails off to make sure we have a blast at these events and they do an awesome job. I've been going to events like this in Europe for many years, but nothing like this really existed in the US until recently. Grid Life is that, you know, it's the music side of it, the drifting, as well as time attack, autocross, everything and anything cool about cars right here. Everything is really, really enclosed and you're able to walk from start finish to the infield and see everything in between. It makes it possible to be on track and see trackside activity from you know 9 a.m. in the morning until midnight and, and I think that's absolutely incredible uh, to build the sport. We've got all new friends that we met this weekend, you know, and there's so much to grow on and, and I'm just so stoked. I'm so excited to see what this event is able to grow into.